too, because now we understand, or we will understand something about reactions, so we can start to do some more interpretation within our physical and chemical changes. In a physical change, the composition remains constant, meaning the molecular formula remains constant. It does not change. Okay? We can change its phase, but we can't change the compound itself. So when we look at melting ice or boiling water, it's still H2O, it's just at different phases. Changing between those is a physical change. A chemical change is where we are now changing the molecular formula. Okay, so another thing we could do instead of looking at molecular formulas would be name the compound. Okay, if the name changes, what does that mean? It's a new chemical change occurred. Okay. So, our evidence for our chemical reactions. Okay, we've seen these already before. Your textbook separated this out into four rules. I think one and rule one and rule two are the same thing. A change in phase. That's a bit misleading. Because if you take ice and heat it up, what happens to the ice? It changes phase. In which case, we might say that is a chemical change because that's exactly what's happening here. A change in phase. And we're saying that's a chemical change. Except it's not. That one's a physical change. How do we know it's a physical change? Okay. It has to come from how that physical change occurred. A change in phase that is not included with heat. Okay. So if we add heat, you're already starting to look at potentially a physical change happening. If we remove heat, you're starting to look at a physical change. So be aware that some phase changes are induced based on temperature, that's a physical change, not a chemical change. Okay? Some big phase changes that stand out, gas formation reactions. So you can see some fizzing. If you take a look at the slide or the picture in our lower right, that's what we're seeing there. We're seeing the formation of hydrogen gas in this case. Okay? The other option is you can see a solid form. Okay? The solid forming is typically referred to as a precipitate and all a precipitate is is a solid very quickly forming out of a, two solutions or a mixture of solutions. In this case, not only do we have a solid forming, which is a sign of a chemical reaction, but what else happened? Color. We have a color change. We started with two clear solutions. How do we know they were clear solutions? Because we have eyes, and we look at that dropper, and in that dropper, what color is it? Clear. clear. In that section where nothing is mixed, what color is it? Clear. clear. We're taking two clear solutions, and we mix them. We see a solid form immediately, chemical change. Not only do we have a chemical change because of the solid forming, we also see this color change. Two clear solutions mixing to form a new color. We've got a chemical change. Okay, you have to be careful that it's not a dilution of color. Last one, an energy change is observed. Equally important to number one and two, not heat induced. If I take some water and I start heating it up, yes, I see a change in energy. The temperature of the water goes up. But why did it go up? Because you added heat. Okay? So if we see a change in energy without adding any extra things on our own, any extra heat or removing heat on our part, then we have a chemical reaction. So if I mix two liquids at the same temperature, and all of a sudden it gets hotter. Okay, well, it's getting hotter because energy was released from the reaction. It's an exothermic reaction. Okay. For those of you moving into 151, you will now start to do mathematics with that release of heat. The sign on that energy is now negative because you've lost heat. If we look at a reaction where we mix those two temperatures or two liquids at the same temperature and it gets colder, the reason it's getting colder is that it is sucking heat out of the surroundings. Okay? It is absorbing that energy. That is referred to as an endothermic reaction. We have an increase in energy, so a positive energy term. Are there other forms of energy changes? Is light emission? Yeah. yeah. We can run reactions that generate light, and that chemical reaction 
can sometimes emit light. It can also sometimes absorb light. Okay. The big ones that you're responsible for are those changes in temperature. Questions on those? You guys are all good with those, right? Oh, yeah. A bunch of extra pictures. When we look at a general equation, what information is supplied in that equation? Say that again. We have the phase. G stands for gas. L, that's an L. Liquid. S, that's a solid. Last one. AQ. What does AQ mean? Aqueous. What does aqueous mean? You just gave me another word I don't understand. Dissolved in water. So by seeing the term AQ, it's not saying it's just D. I'm saying it is D and water. So water is now also implied within this reaction, even though it's not explicitly written. Okay. So we've got phase information. What else is in there? How do you know there's a reaction? This means a reaction occurred, which you'll often see me abbreviate as RXN. Along those same lines, what does that mean these species are? Reactants. What does that mean those species are? Products. Anything else? a tricky one because you look at it and you're like, oh, I don't see anything else. How much A reacts with how much B? 1A. One 1A one and 1B one react to produce 1C and 1D. Our balanced equation, and that balancing becomes a nightmare, but we'll look at that nightmare later, gives us information about how much, or actually let's call it how many. Why do we not write the 1 there? It's implied. But didn't we imply zeros in other cases? Why are we not implying a 0 here? If we put a 0 then, that means there's nothing there. Right? So we will imply the 1 in this case because the 0 doesn't make any sense to include. Okay? So we've got pretty much all of the information that we can kind of pull out of this. Your textbook provides you with a bunch of extra stuff. Okay, one thing we didn't address, the positive sign. What does the positive sign mean? Okay. Reacts with C plus D, our products react with each other. It's a little bit weird to phrase, technically yes, but okay. all we're saying is we now have another species. If I got rid of the positive sign, it starts to look like C is bound to D. Is that what I'm trying to say with the equation? No, I'm trying to say they're separate things. So I use that positive sign to just separate those. You might see a little delta written above your reaction arrow. What did we say the delta represented? Change. change. In this case, it's representing the change in heat. The delta always signifies an addition of heat to the reaction. You might see another little symbol written over an arrow. In this case, we have Fe. What does Fe mean? It's iron. Why is iron written over the arrow? It is helping the reaction to occur. Okay. So we will sometimes see something written over our arrow to imply an extra little piece that helps the reaction happen. That's referred to as a catalyst. Okay. NR, I don't see any NR in there. Well, there's no NR up in that equation because that equation did react. It did produce C and D. What if it didn't react? I can just write NR. There's no point in trying to predict what the products are if there are no products. So we can just say no reaction. Okay. So lots of little tiny pieces of information that you can stash into an equation. Through all of chemistry, do these rules hold true? No. In fact, when we move to organic chemistry, which is why I like organic over gen chem, all of these phases, we imply them. We ignore them altogether. We don't include them anymore. 
the reaction arrow with a symbol over the top, very often that symbol over the top is actually a reactant in our equation. It's not a catalyst. It's actually being used as a reactant. Okay. So be aware that these are not hard, fast rules, but they give us a first starting point to apply information out of our equations. Okay. Within a chemical reaction, so if we've got one here, describe this chemical reaction to me. Should I start it for you? Is that a no? You don't want me to start it for you? Go ahead and start it. Okay. Solid sodium hydride is reacted with <coughs> acetic acid. To produce, which yields sodium acetate. <laughs> what phase is sodium acetate? Aqueous. So we can say to produce aqueous sodium acetate and hydrogen gas. To do all of that, what did you have to pull right back into the breaches of your brain, which we've already established that you guys are now awesome at because you had so much practice in the lab. Nomenclature. nomenclature. You can't forget your nomenclature. You will be using it again and again and again. That said, I hate nomenclature. I just accepted those point losses. If that's what you're doing, accepting the point loss, that's fine. Okay, and you can let me know that. So that when I look at it and say, you know your material better than that, why are your scores lower? You can say, oh, I just decided to ignore all of those points. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Okay. So when we go through and look at this reaction, you'll notice one thing that's kind of interesting. It says hydrogen gas. I didn't write just H. I wrote H2. Why is it H2? It's a molecule. Why is it a molecule? Because it's two atoms. Why is it two atoms? Satisfy what? The uh, I can accept that. Satisfy its Lewis structure. So we can go back to Lewis structures and predict something about the formula of hydrogen. Okay. There's an easier way, because you all love Lewis structures, right? You're perfect, awesome at that now. Yeah. There's an easier way. How do we know hydrogen should be two molecules or two atoms? To make the equation balance? Nope. There are certain elements that are referred to as diatomic elements. Those diatomic elements, whenever they are formed in their pure state, must be written as the symbol 2, because there are two of them. Which elements are diatomic? It's a hint. It's on the slides. <coughs> Hydrogen. Nitrogen. Nitrogen. Oxygen. Oxygen. Chlorine, iodine, way to jump out of order there. Bromine, chlorine. Okay. Those are all diatomic. Anytime you form those species on their own, you must make them diatomic. Okay. Becomes a little bit tricky sometimes, but that's how you have to evaluate them. Okay. How can you remember those? An L? Okay, we've got an upside down L shape. That works. The tutor said it was like a gun, and then hydrogen is a bullet. A gun, a little pew pew of the hydrogen, yeah, okay. I tend to think of it as a seven, but when we look at the seven, there's how many elements outlined? Six, which means we're missing the last one. There's our hydrogen. There's our seven. The other one, which has stuck in my head for a very long time, have no fear of ice cold beer. <laughs> hydrogen, nitrogen, fluorine, oxygen, iodine, chlorine, bromine. You've got them all written out nice and simple there. Okay? That works out as a way to memorize those. As long as you are aware that you need those, you're good to go. Okay? Balancing chemical reactions. When we look at a chemical reaction, we cannot create or destroy matter. That was chapter, I think it was three. I think it was chapter, I'm actually not sure. We can't create or destroy matter. 
which means when we go through to do, look at the sides of our reaction, we have on the left what we started with and on the right what we ended with. If I start with one sodium, what did I better end with? One sodium. If it has disappeared from the equation, what does that mean? You just won a Nobel Prize because you destroyed matter. Okay? We can't destroy matter. You got to make sure it's balanced across the equation. Okay? So when we go through and look at this, we could now attempt to balance. Well, to balance, what we'll do is start with any element we choose. We already started to look at this. We could look at sodium. How many sodiums on the left-hand side of the equation? How many sodiums on the right-hand side? Is sodium balanced? What do we do now? Move to the next element. Yeah, we're going to do it this way. I don't like this way, but we're going to do it this way. Hydrogen. How many hydrogens are on the left-hand side? One, two, three total of five hydrogens. How many hydrogens on the right-hand side of the equation? Five. It's so a quick note. What if you happen to not remember that hydrogen gas was H2 and you wrote it as just H? Is your equation balanced? No. And you're now going to try and go through and balance it, and you're going to have a really hard time balancing it because you predicted a product that was incorrect. You cannot balance the equation until you have the correct reactants and products. Next element. Carbon. How many carbons on the reactant side? Two. How many carbons on the product side? Two. Next element. Oxygen. We have two and two. What's your next step? I know it's kind of weird. Along those lines, your next step is how many sodiums do I have on the reactant side? That was a question. Yeah, one. How many on the product side? What's next? How many hydrogens on the reactant side? On the product side? Next, how many carbons on the reactant side? Two. How many carbons on the product side? Two. How many oxygens? What's your next step? Someone's been listening ahead to my future lectures. Sodium. And hydrogen. Oxygen, ha. Two and two. And carbon and next step. Do it again. Okay. How many of you have balanced equations before? The rest of you, guess what? You will do this again until you are literally angry at me that I'm making you check it that many times. For those of you that have balanced already, you should still get angry at me that I'm making you check it all these times. Studies have proven the more emotional you get within your studying process, it triggers tighter brain synapses and you remember better. If you go through it just kind of passive, yeah, whatever, I just did this. Okay. Guess what happens? It does not stick in your head and then when you get to a highly emotional state, like say during an exam, you have none of those brain connections and you bomb the exam. I accept that anger. I welcome it. Get angry at me when you solve problems correctly. If you solve them wrong, don't get angry at me. So Ask for help. Angry? Yeah. So is there an exact number of times you want to do this? Or do you... it depends when you get angry with me. <laughs> okay. Is there another way that we can balance? So here we went through and looked at every single element. There is one more method to balancing this that I want to address here that becomes more relevant further on. I can look at sodium at both sides, and those are the same. I can look at hydrogen, and here's where it's going to get weird. I'm going to make the claim that there are only two hydrogens on the reactant side, 
and there are two hydrogens on the product side. Acetate is now one unit. I will not separate the hydrogens out of it, the carbons out of it, or the oxygens out of it. And what I will instead balance is C2H3O2. On the reactant side, how many are there? On the product side, how many are there? One. Okay. You can pull out complex ions and balance those ions across the equation. Just be careful. The complex ion had better not change in the course of the reaction. Right? You can't just randomly start pulling atoms out of nowhere to say, oh, now I have acetate. You have to see that formula show up again. Okay? This was a straightforward one because it was already balanced. Nice and straightforward, nice and easy to work with. Okay? Um, so, our guidelines. Here's that step that I'm telling you to do. Cycle through it multiple times. Particularly, if you change any number in your equation, you should be going through and checking your work several times thereafter. Anytime you change a number, you must check it at least once more. If you go through your process and you don't change any numbers, more than likely you're square, you can go ahead and move on. I still recommend you do it until you're mad at me. Yeah. Can we use pencil for that? For lecture, you can always use pencil. For lab, you have to use pen. And you can show all your work. Fine. Yep. Okay. So let's take a look at some more complex examples. For this first one, let's walk through this first one. How many hydrogens do I have on the reactant side? On the product side? Oxygens. And one. Ooh, so now we have a dilemma. I need two oxygens on the product side. How do we fix this? Okay. The first thing that most students will go to is say, okay, well, if I need two oxygens, I'll make that a two. Now I have two oxygens. Yes, you have two oxygens, but is it the formation of water anymore? No, you've changed the formula. When you're balancing an equation, you cannot change formulas which is why it is of critical importance that your formulas must be correct before you start balancing the equation. So how can I make sure that I get two oxygens on the product side? If I can't change the formula. It will change the coefficient in front of where it shows up. Okay. I now have two oxygens on the product side. I changed a number. As soon as I change a number, I now must go back and check my work. Okay? So we go back up to our hydrogens. How many hydrogens on the reactant side? Two. How many hydrogens on the product side? Now there's four. There's the two from our formula, but I have two of those formulas, which means four. Are my hydrogens balanced? How do I balance them? I need to put a 2 in front of the H2. That H2 now becomes 4. Check my oxygens. How many oxygens? 2 and 2. I already changed the number, so I've got to go back and check again. How many hydrogens? 4 and 4. Oxygen? 2 and 2. This is where I would say you continue to go through and check. Okay? We've gone through it once where we changed no, nu we changed no numbers. That's proper English? We changed no numbers? We didn't change numbers? That sounds better. We didn't change any numbers. Okay? So that's probably balanced. How could I ask a question about balancing on the exam, particularly in, say, a multiple choice situation? What is the coefficient in front of water? Two. Multiple choice, I could write one. If you didn't change anything, there'd be a one in front. Okay. So you would likely see probably zero, one, two, and then I'm out of options, three, four, just to fill out the rest of the answers. The other way that I can ask this question without looking at those individual things 
or sort of, is say what is the sum of the coefficients for the balanced equation? What is the sum of the coefficients for this equation? Five. To do the sum, it's two plus two, which gets me to four. What number is in front of the oxygen? A one. So I have five. There's my sum of my coefficients. There was a hand. You don't need to include parentheses in this case because the coefficient applies to everything after it up to the plus symbol. So you don't need to worry about or parentheses. The parentheses are important for formulas, not for balancing. Do you like negative one for the so go through and start working on the other ones. If you've got questions, raise your hand. You should be able to go through and balance those. Uh, I'll give you a couple minutes.